Hey, what are you at guys? My name is Troy and welcome to Facility D20. Today we're going to be doing a video on the assembly guide for the Assault Intercessor Marines from the Indominus box set. I'm going to take you guys in, show you how to assemble these things, what mold lines to look out for, and hopefully make this experience a little easier for you guys. We're going to be following this guide set out in the Indominus box set. So stick around, smash that like button, and let's get to it. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to do is going to assemble the Sergeant. There's actually three different versions of this one model using the same bits. You can see it here in Windows 7A and 7B. So it's one of the most confusing parts uh, about this kit. And we're going to be using Sprue A. And you can identify it here with this little guide. So here it is, Sprue A. First thing we're going to do is start to clip out the pieces in succession. So basically it starts with A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. like that. Except for this first one. This first one is a little different. Uh, you have to pay close attention to which version you're going to build. Here we're going to build the second version. So the sergeant with his helmet on and the bolter. So when you're clipping these things out, you want to make sure that you clip down low and you try not to clip out any pieces of the model or gouge or gash the model. And I like to clip them out versus just twist them out because sometimes twisting them out can leave little indentations in the model and you, you really don't want that when you're trying to do a nice clean paint job. So the next thing you wanna do is go in and remove any of the excess spurs. You can see these pegs. I like to cut one off of those pegs to make sure the pegs fit in correctly and just use the edge of my blade to smooth out any mold lines. There's a bad one here uh, along his chest and there was one on his shin. You can also find one on the shield which is common for almost all these kits. So just gently scrape that off. You don't want to put too much pressure to scratch or gouge the model but you do want to clean it up. Again you want to clean the peg on the bottom of the boot so it fits in correctly. Remove that small mold line on the shin. There's a small one on the thigh. Make sure you clean up any uh, bits of plastic you got left over. And on the holster for the pistol, there's also a bad one you gotta try to clean. Along the shoulder blades here. On the chest plate, um, this is the only model that has a separate chest plate on, but there's a bad kind of mold line, sprue line there along the shield. Uh, and one around his neck. So make sure to clean those. And on the elbows, Specifically the elbow of the gun hand. There's usually a um, pretty bad burr, so clean that off. And the top of the gun barrels. If you like to drill out your gun barrels, this is the perfect time to do it. Me, I don't really bother with it, but uh, I don't want to risk ruining the model. The chain swords, right at the tip of the chain swords, there's a particularly bad one that you have to clean off. Try to smooth that down as nice as you can. Here you can see I'm uh, Took it quite a bit of time actually to do it and ended up pulling off a bit of plastic but it was okay it worked out in the end i got this video spit up obviously playing at two times speed here and then uh, the other hand right on the bottom of his palm there's one on the elbow again there's one you want to be careful here you don't gouge too much out of the plastic and then finally, the backpacks. The backpacks, as I pointed out, have three terrible spots. Um, one in the middle, one on either end. And they're round, so they're kind of hard to get cleaned off. But take your time here, especially in the middle, and clean those off because they're extremely noticeable. They're in a terrible spot. So once those parts were cleaned, I used Gorilla Glue this time around to glue them. Um, this is the only model that has this hip piece which holds his sword and his helmet. You want to put a little tiny tiny bit of glue here, not too much so it still slides into the slot and just slip that right in place and check the back of it and make sure there's no gap along the belt line here. Push it in nice and firm, give it a second to dry. And you want to add some glue around the edges of where the chest plate is going to connect, but you try, don't try to fill up these holes where the push fit 
is going to go because if you fill those holes up, you're going to have trouble getting it to close. This one has a front and a back piece. You can go ahead and push those together and you can see it has a gap in his chest. And that's where that shield piece is going to go along with the head. So press it in firmly. The head, there's also a mold line right at the tip of the helmet and on either sides of that tip. So just go ahead and carefully clean those off. Um, make sure you've got the head nice and clean so it can fit into place. And then add just a tiny bit of glue. It's a press fit model, so um, once it goes in place, it kind of gets stuck there anyway with the natural way the model goes together. But just add a bit of glue in there to make sure that it seals tightly and then go ahead and slip that chest plate on there. Press it firmly, make sure that it comes together under the armpit areas. Uh, here I cleaned off a little bit more of a burr that was on the front of his helmet with the point of the X-Acto knife here. And then I grabbed the base and stuck them on the base just to make them a little easier to work with. The nice thing about these Intercessor Marines, the backpacks here, they kind of go into place where they fit in the correct orientation of the torso. Just make sure that you push them in all the way and you don't fill that hole up with glue. And then you can just um, slide the peg into the base here on his foot. After that, I add a little bit of glue and I like to add the glue on the pegs instead of the holes of the arms. That way when you push the arms on over, any excess glue gets pushed out into the shoulder blade areas and don't clog up the hole and not allow it to fit. Now these pegs and the slots in these arms only fit in a particular orientation, which is uh, depicted in the picture. So I fooled around with this one for a little bit, but I finally got it in place. Just make sure you got no gaps under the shoulder pad here and it twists into the correct orientation. And then the same thing for the other free hand here. Slide that in place and this first sergeant guy is done. You can see here he looks pretty sweet, come together very nicely, nice and clean with all the mold lines removed. And here's the other version of it. It's the sergeant with the helmetless version and the chainsword in the air charging forward. So. Basically with this kit, you get to choose which of these you can build. You can build two different versions out of the three options. And then we move into the next page. Here's the third option for this kit using the same pieces. So that's where it gets a little confusing. But now we're gonna move on to 7C. Here there are two of these in the kit. And this one has a separate leg. So its body and its legs are in three pieces. So I went ahead and carefully clipped out, here you can see the torso without the leg, the leg itself, and then the back and the full leg and the torso all in one. So clip all those out, make sure you pay attention to the numbers. Make sure you choose the right numbers. Again, they are in succession. Uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Clip them all out nice and cleanly, try not to cut into the model and begin the process of cleaning again. This particular one has a really bad, bad burr here you can see on the back of, uh, of the heel here. So this one had to be filed down. There's a mold line right on the back part of the calf, on the shin, the toe, and the kneecap. Carefully clean those off. This particular shield on its leg didn't have any. Uh, clean the peg so it fits in that hole correctly. And right here you can see there's a bad mold line there and one right there in the kneecap that I filed down. One on the gun, seems like there's always one on this gun holster here. That's where this sprue connects to the model. Go ahead and clean that one off and clean off the one on the armpit. Continue to do this. Make sure you clean those pegs nice and clean so they fit into the slots correctly. If not, it's gonna give you trouble when you're trying to push those arms on. And the same with the leg on this one. Head, of course, clean that little burr on the bottom so that it fits into the chest correctly. But don't cut the whole thing off so you don't got a, that little extra piece to clip it to. Make sure you be careful there and keep that little extra piece on. Shoulders, again, there's a terrible one on the shoulder. Clean that one up, scrape it down nice and clean. Take your time. Uh, be careful if you're using the knife like I am here, cutting towards myself, but I've been at this for like 15, 20 years now, so I'm gonna getting pretty good at controlling the knife, but uh, you better be careful or you can cut yourself. 
Again, the chainsaw. Now, these chainsaws are a pretty badass weapon. I imagine the only thing more dangerous is probably a lightsaber. Can you imagine just swinging this thing around? I mean, I cut a bit of wood in my day, and uh, it can be pretty intimidating, a big uh, chainsaw. I think Ash from The Evil Dead got a pretty close depiction of what a chainsaw would look like in real life. I always love that weapon. I'm glad uh, to see them back here on these Marines. Okay, make sure you fit this left leg into position and there's no gap in the crotch area here. Nice and tight into position. This is the only model that has that extra leg off to the side, is the one depicted in 7C. And again, there's two of those. When you're placing the glue, I just use a little bit of glue because the push fit really keeps them in place and I do not put it in the holes again. And here you can see how the head slots and kind of clips into place when you put this torso on. Press it firmly, hold it there for a bit, make sure those gaps are good and closed. Fix his head so you can paint the, paint the guy. I popped him on his base then. And forgot to clip out the backpack. So I quickly looked which backpack I needed. It was number 27 and then I cleaned it in the three common spaces. I always wonder these backpacks really, sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. But it's almost pretty much, um, it's pretty much hard to envision a space marine now without these backpacks. Again, just the slightest minute amount of glue around the back and make sure you press this firmly in place so that it slots in and the orientation lines up correctly with the torso again. A little bit of glue around the armpits on those pegs and this one slotted in a lot easier. I kind of uh, nailed the orientation first try there and then the bolt gun, bam, that's in place. Nothing to it. This guy's done. Nice and clean, all put together. This Gorilla Glue will dry up pretty quickly. And he's ready to roll. Now we're moving on to 7D. E and F. All of these are basically the same type of model. They all have the same amount of pieces and they go together in the same fashion, unlike those first two that we did. So this next one, 7D, goes from A 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Make sure when you're clipping these out, you pay close attention and you clip out the correct ones so that the pegs and the arms line up correctly. If you get out of sequence, you're gonna start having problems putting these things together. Careful around the bolt there when you clip it out that you don't clip off the, the barrel of the gun. Get all these parts out first, put your sprue aside and then start cleaning. So these three here all have the same mold line. So I'll take you through the first one. Again, clean those pegs. Sometimes if you gotta cut a little tiny bit off the peg, it's not a big deal. Bad mold line on the shield of these and the leg. And uh, for the most part after that, they were pretty clean. The bottom of their foots, clean that off just so it doesn't uh, look awkward when you glue it to the base. There's a bad one right here on the kneecap and the thigh and the shield on this side of the torso. So the torso with the back has the most mold lines. Gun holster, clean that one up. And right on the back of the neck guard here. Head. Same mold lines as the rest of them. Now if you go ahead and you gouge this a little bit too bad when you're doing these, don't worry. You can either fill it in with some green stuff or you can just go ahead and paint it up like some battle damage. But you want to make sure that you've got a sharp X-Acto knife when you're doing this. You don't want to be doing this with a dull knife because a dull knife is just going to scratch and it's not going to shave those little mold lines off. So you can see here, the backpack's all cleaned up. The gun arm, not too bad. 
clean off the elbow, clean off the barrel, drill it out if you like. Nice and clean. Getting this sweet chain sword's got that bad burr right at the top. Fix that one up. Look at this one. Look at this big knob on the shoulder here. Now, some of that is from me clipping it far away from the sprue, but that's a really, really bad sprue join point there. It's probably the worst one. It's right on a flat surface, so it's hard to haul it if you gouge it out or you cut it off a little wrong. But this arm's pretty cool. It had a bit of a extra detail along the forearm there like that. Once that was done, it's pretty simple. This one's got a front and a back piece, which pins the head in place. Go ahead and glue up around the arms, down around the crotch area, around the neck. Try not to fill up those holes. Slot your head in place, and then push on the front torso and leg. And make sure you push it together and it goes nice and firmly. This one gave me a lot of trouble. For whatever reason, this one would not go together. You can see I'm even like putting impressions in my fingers here. So I held it down and I pinned it tight. And I managed to get it to go and draw up and glue together fairly well. Backpack time. And then the arms. Push that backpack in nice and tight. Just little bits of glue here. I honestly would recommend any sort of glue gel over the liquid gel, unless you just want to glue your fingers to the model and run it all down over the side. I, liquid gel, liquid glue, sorry, doesn't really work that great for these tiny little models, in my opinion, my experience. And all these, if you're wondering how those arms and legs go, just refer to the assembly guide. And then the next two is gonna run through on Windows 7E and 7F. So there's two like this in the kits. And I'm not gonna clip them all out this time and show you that, I'm just gonna show you how I assembled them. So these primary space marines, tell, tell me guys, what do you think of these things? Um, they're growing on me a little bit. When they first came out, I was slightly annoyed with the fluff and the reasons behind them. I think. Personally, fluff-wise, I would have preferred if GW just came out and said these are the new scale Space Marines and they didn't actually invent Primera Space Marines to kind of come in and take the place of Space Marines. I would have just straight up preferred that this was a new version. You can see this one too, man. This one was tight. This one would not go together at all. Like, I even pulled them apart again just to see if there was anything clogging those holes, but it wasn't. So he was just a tight fit. So I had to give them the old uh, one, two, three pin here and try to put them into place. And after a while, I got them as close as I could and I just gave up and I said, screw it, this guy's together as good as he's gonna go together now. I got a shit ton of other stuff to build. And this is sped up. I was trying to push this guy together for a good like five or six minutes and edit it. And then it was time to just stick them on the base here. All these bases I'm gonna redo with some scenic bases, but for now, during the painting process, this'll do. Backpack, arms. Refer to the picture here to see how these arms are oriented and it'll help you slide them into place a little easier. And make sure you push them right down to the end. You give them a little twist so that they're secure and you check under the armpits for awkward gaps. A little extra glue here, I didn't have a lot on there. And sorry for pulling it off screen, but I was trying to get a better look at it and push it into place, and there you go. That's that guy done. Moving on to the final one. I clipped them all out, and this one is pretty much exactly like the previous two that we just did. The only difference here really is they're posing. And that's why you need to make sure that you follow the sequence. This one, of course, from Windows 7F, there's two of these, and they go from 34 through to 39. Make sure that you 
clip out all the correct parts. Just don't grab your sprue and start clipping out the bolters and, and the chainsaws and the backpacks and throwing them all into one pile. Backpacks and the heads you'll probably get away with, but the torsos and the arms, you want to make sure that you just cut them out as you need them and save yourself the headache of trying to find all these parts after because it'll be next to impossible and you'll be trying to fit arms on for days. So this one actually went together like butter. Maybe I was just getting the hang of it at this point, but this one went together super easy. So that's it. These are the five different types of Intercessor Marines that's in this kit. And this whole process is just repeated over. Make sure you put your top on your glue. You don't want that drawing up on you. And then you're poking holes in it, try to use it, it's a pain in the ass. I see Indominus set. I went ahead and sucked up all the little bits of plastic with my handy dandy shop vac that I keep under my hobby desk here. And I decided to go in and just have a look and see what was left over for bits in this kit. So after these uh, five were made from this sprue, I had a few bits left over. It looks like I had two heads here, pop those out. I had extra shield piece, chest piece, plasma gun here, chain sword, and the hip piece. And all these are basically corresponds to the sergeant and the three different builds you could do. So you'll have those bits times two.